Hi guys, and happy Fire Alarm Friday. Okay, so for today's demonstration, we are going to be talking about a fire alarm feature called verification. Now what verification is, is essentially if you are selecting or placing a smoke detector in an area where there's going to probably be a lot of dust or um, some type of a simulant that will likely set off the smoke detector, you can use verification to help prevent the likelihood of false alarms. Now, the unfortunate thing about verification is that it can delay the alarm response time, meaning that if you turn this feature on and there's an actual fire, it can take longer for the actual system to activate in case there is an actual fire. Therefore, this feature is not used. In fact, the NX8, uh, the Interlogic's NX8 in its installation manual actually uh, gives a disclaimer that says that this feature is not approved for residential use in the state of California. And I'm going to assume that is because the California's AHJ or the people who write up all the fire codes for commercial and residential buildings uh, forbid the use of this feature because, well, where are you going to ever find a smoke detector that well, requires verification. I mean, if it's in a kitchen, then that might be understandable, but even then, does a kitchen actually produce that much smoke in a given day? Probably not, unless if you're burning something like toast. So I realized that my original footage did not quite have the best explanation, so I will give you one right now. There are many different types of fire alarm verification, but the one that we are going to be talking about right now is called time-based verification. Time-based Okay. So what this essentially means is that a detector or a zone must be activated twice in a given period of time in order to trigger a full alarm. Now what exactly do I mean by this? Well, I'll draw a quick timeline. Okay. Okay, and we're just going to call this T sub 0 or the beginning of time. Okay. So at the beginning of time, there happens to be a fire that starts. Okay, so a fire starts at t sub zero, or the beginning of time. Now, we'll say that since it produces a lot of smoke, um, a smoke detector happens to activate. So, so detector on zone S, and we'll just call this detector one, activates. All right. What will happen next is the panel will power cycle the entirety of that particular zone. Uh, whether that be, it will, since let's say that there are three detectors on zone S, so it will power cycle all of the detectors that are on zone S. So we'll just say over here, panel power cycles zone S, all right? And S can be any number, by the way. All right, what will happen next is that the panel will go through a period of time, and this is limited, uh, the max that with this particular uh, NX8 is 225, 255 seconds. So let's just say that the end here is 255 seconds. Within this period of time, if any other detector on zone S, so let's say that is, well, let's just say that S1 act happens to activate again, because remember, we haven't put out the fire yet. So if S1 happens to activate within this 255 second window, then that is what's going to set it into alarm. And now it's important to realize that with a verification system that is based by zones, any detector on that specific zone can activate. That means anything uh, S1, S sub 1 happened to activate, but it could also include S sub 2 or S sub 3. We said that there were three detectors on zone S. Any of these three detectors that activates will set, up, set off an alarm condition if it so happens that one of the detectors happened activated before this uh, period of watch time. Now, as I said before, this can take an extended period of time for an alarm to activate. So without verification, this detector would happen to set the panel off an alarm. But with verification, there is an extra period of time 
uh, just to make sure that that fire alarm is supposed to be a about a true fire. Uh, and unfortunately, this can uh, take an extended amount of time for the fire alarm to activate. And considering that a house fire doubles in size uh, in less than 30 seconds or less, give or take, um, this feature is not going to be used that often because, well, any type of verification will add uh, time, unnecessary time to the response for a fire. So you, that's why you probably won't find this very often in the building. So with that being said, let's go ahead and program the system to do verification. Now one other note, um, as I am recording this, because all my family members are in quarantine and I didn't quite give them a heads up like I'm supposed to when that I'm going to be testing the system, uh, we're just gonna kind of run a bit of a silent test. Um, how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna disable the siren driver. The siren, uh, the speakers are still going to be connected to the system, but I'm gonna disable the, the siren driver just so that it won't disturb any of the family members. I've also disabled the keypad beeper downstairs so it won't disable uh, disturb any of the family members that are downstairs. But in an actual situation, you would still want to have the siren drivers on or whatever your system is configured to do. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go into programming, star eight. You'll see that there's these lights flashing. And we're gonna enter in our programming passcode. Okay, now you see the service light is on. We're gonna go into zero pound. This is where our control panel is. And we're gonna first disable the siren. So we're gonna go into location 37, hit pound. Um, let's see. All right, so it looks like we are in segment one. We're gonna to wanna to go into segment two. Segment two, and then we're gonna enable option one, which is to turn on the siren driver, or disable the siren driver and use it as a voltage, a 12 volts one amp output. We're gonna hit star to save it. And then we're just gonna keep scrolling through, or we can just hit pound so we can save it. Okay, the next thing that we are going to go into is we're gonna go into the system timers location, which I don't, which I'm, as I'm scrolling, ah, it's in location 40. All right, so I'm gonna hit 40, hit pound. All right, now that we're ready to in, um, do stuff, we're gonna go all the way into segment nine. So we are right now in segment one, so segment nine. Uh, let's see, so this is segment one, segment two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And right now you can see that the default is zero. Uh, because there is well no fair the fire alarm verification is disabled so the time is currently set to zero but let's go ahead and set it to a period of two minutes then we would hit star 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 okay there we go so now that we've exited uh, location 40 we can now exit the programming we can just hit exit exit and you can see the service light goes on for a little bit but that's just because the system is initializing and registering all of the stuff all right and the service light went out all right, and that is the signal to indicate that we are good to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, to our right, we have our generic siren security speaker thingy that you can find on a bunch of other systems, probably. Um, and to the left here, we have our i3-4 wire. I think it's the I system sensor i3-4B. I don't remember model numbers well, but it is our photoelectric uh, smoke detector that is connected to the system. What I'm going to be doing first for you guys is I'm going to use this nice little screwdriver thing. Well, that's close. I'm going to use this nice little screwdriver thing to test, use uh, to push that little test button. And by the way, someone did mention that it tests the chamber. No, that is not true. Um, with the majority of smoke detectors, unless if you're, I think that was the Family Guard smoke detector that uh, did this at one point. There is no smoke detector that uses the test button to actually test the smoke chamber. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, it all, all it does is it tests the detector's ability to communicate a fire condition and not test the actual smoke detector chamber itself. Uh, in order to test the smoke chamber, uh, and that's probably what's going to be setting off this, uh, the verification, we're going to be using this nice little can of smoke saber, um, which I will be doing the flick as many uh, of my viewers have requested before uh, to do. And I'll be, rest assured I'll be doing something like that. Alright, I am now ready, and let us go ahead and push the test button. All right, you can see that the detector head just turned off. Uh, what it's now doing is that the detector is going to be power cycled by the panel. Uh, that's just a fancy term of just cutting the power off and turning it back on from the detector head. And it's now gonna wait 20, 120 seconds for the detector to activate again, which we're not gonna quite do this time. Um, 
Actually, let's just for fun, let's set it off again. All right, and you can see that the detector has gone off again. reset the panel ish <laughs> I guess you could call that resetting the panel uh, but doing star 7 does reset the system so everything should be back to normal mostly <laughs> all right so you just saw what uh, would have normally happened if there was actual smoke in the system and the panel was on verification now again this feature is not usually used as often because well where are you going to be needing to have verification as a feature in a normal system that doesn't have a lot of um, stimulants that could possibly set off as a false alarm. So, as a popular request, I shall be doing the smoke saver. Oh, come on. Take two. There we go. A nice little smoke saver flick. Alright, uh, I think that, okay, I saw a green light, so I think we should be good to test the system again. So, I'm gonna, this time, actually, I wonder if, uh, actually, no, let's not turn on the lights, because I think that would ruin the effect. But what, we're, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to be spraying a little bit more smoke saver than what so, and many inspectors would probably be doing, just to make sure that the chamber is going to be activated itself. So we're going to spray it, and let's see what happens. It should be going off soon, but I don't know if it's just initializing. Alright, and it went off once, and it should be going off in just a few minutes. Now again, the detector has to activate within 120 seconds, or else the panel is just going to recognize it as a first alarm again. So consider this as like a pre-alarm stage. And you can see the detector activated again. Alright, I'm going to silence the system before we can reset it. Alright, that's a method. You enter the code to silence the system and then you head to star 7 to actually reset it. Alright, so you can see the detector did activate. I'm going to go ahead and blow out the head so it doesn't... Okay, I think this should be good now, so we can mount this back up. Alrighty. Okay, you can see the zone, light, zone 8 light went out because, well, the detector, we technically reset the detector, uh, but the firelight is still on, so we're just going to reset it. With that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this nice little feature demonstrating what verification is, and I will see you guys later. Bye.